Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi. Uh, if you guys have been on the SR Lounge Facebook page, you'll have seen that we we frequently will ask you guys what you guys would like to learn next in uh, Lightroom or Photoshop. Uh, it's a great way to kind of make your opinions known to make sure that we're teaching things that you guys actually want and you guys need. Um, so a after all, SR Lounge is made for you guys. So be sure to get on there and make your opinions known. So in this tutorial, we're going to teach you guys how to tone map an image in Lightroom, and this is actually from a suggestion made by Kelly Robertson Jones on the Facebook, uh, on the SR Lounge Facebook page, when she suggested that our next tutorial be about advanced tone curve techniques in Lightroom. So we're going to talk about the tone curve, we'll be using our basic adjustments, we're going to be using a lot of different things to get this effect, and what we're going to be doing is turning this basic raw file into this finished raw image right here. Alright guys, so let's get started. Now the first thing I want to do is delete this finished image because I don't want it to be our crutch and let's get to the original and let's talk about real briefly what is tone mapping. Now tone mapping is essentially the process of taking an image with a limited dynamic range. What is limited dynamic range? Well basically our cameras shoot with a limited dynamic range because it essentially means that if you can see details in the highlights usually your shadows are clipped, they're too dark. Um, and if you can see details in the shadows then usually your highlights are blown, they're completely white. So images with uh, high dynamic range show detail from uh, the darkest of shadows all the way up to the brightest of highlights and that's where you get HDR images. Now HDR images have become kind of synonymous with uh, these overly candied painted images that are plastered all over the web uh, but they don't have to be that way. So tone mapping is, is just the process of taking a single image and increasing the dynamic range of that image through processing. Now there are a few key things you must do in camera when you're trying to shoot an image that you later want to tone map. Number one is shoot it in RAW. JPEGs do not store enough information to be able to bring out the tonal range that you need to create this type of image. Um, number two, shoot it at a low ISO, meaning 200 should basically be the max. I would recommend shooting at 100 ISO or even going down to uh, extended 50 ISO if you, if you have that in your camera. All right, the next thing is you want to shoot it so that basically you're not blowing your highlights and you're not uh, clipping your shadows, meaning that the exposure should be kind of somewhere, uh, kind of a little bit on the darker side in the middle of everything. So you can kind of see in this shot, you can kind of see that we still have our details in the highlights um, and our shadows, while they are dark, we still see most of the detail in the shadows. So this median exposure will make sure that there's as much information uh, as possible there and then what we'll do from here is is adjust it. Alright guys so let's get started I'm gonna hit I to remove my information we're gonna hit F twice to go to full screen I'm gonna hit F5, 6, and 7 to remove all my panels except for the right side so we have all of our screen real estate. I also don't really need this toolbar so I'm gonna remove the toolbar real fast by hitting T. Okay now when you're first starting to kind of process this type of image you might think of jumping to the tone curve first and and making your adjustments here basically pulling up the shadows pulling down your highlights and stuff like that I would recommend against this. I would I'd recommend basically using the tone curve in Lightroom to make minor adjustments. The Lightroom's tone curve is not powerful enough to make large sweeping adjustments and what will happen is that basically you'll get unnatural gradation in your tonal range uh, across like your shadows and your highlights if we pull it up too high. So check this out. If I want to brighten up my shadows here, if I click here and I just go over this area and I pull it up, and then I zoom in, you're going to start to see that we have this kind of very unnatural gradation uh, pattern in, in those shadowy area. And I want to avoid that. And so what we're going to do basically is we're going to use our tone curve to make minor adjustments, uh, not large ones. Okay, so let's hold Alt, and I'm going to hit Reset Region to reset my tone curve. So what we want to do first basically is adjust our exposure, recovery, and fill light. Now if you guys remember from previous tutorials, basically our exposure has priority over highlights. Uh, recovery is going to pull back just the highlights. Fill light is going to uh, add detail just to the shadows, so it's going to brighten just the shadows. And brightness has kind of an overall effect over all the tones with a little bit more effect in the mid-tone area. Alright, so let's start with exposure. Let's pull it down so that we kind of deepen our, uh, our highlights up in the sky. Then we're going to add 100% recovery to pull back the rest of just all the detail that we possibly can in the highlight area. Now what we're going to do is add in fill light. And fill light is just going to add detail into all the shadows areas of our image. Now 
when we talked about shooting at a low ISO, this is exactly why, because fill light will add a lot of noise to your image. And if we zoom in, you can actually start to see some of that noise. So let me actually bring back my, uh, I want to bring back my left side panel and go to 3 to 1 so we can actually zoom in completely. All right, so let me pull back the fill light. And so you can start to see noise being added in this image. Now, this was shot at 100 ISO, so imagine if you shot it at 200, 400, 800, it'd basically become unusable. So let's pull up our fill light to kind of somewhere probably around 60 to start with. Let's just get it kind of brightened up. And now we see that what's happening is basically we're bringing up the shadow tones over here in the left side of the stadium. We're pulling down our highlight tones on the right side. And it's kind of making the overall image just a little bit less contrasty, but we'll fix that in a minute. Uh, right now, we just want to kind of balance this, uh, kind of balance the overall tone of the image. Now, from here, I'm going to start using the tone curve to make minor adjustments to the image to kind of add contrast, um, you know, boost my highlights, boost some shadows. And the thing is, you can really use the uh, basic sliders in the basic panel. Like, you can use blacks to add your blacks. You can use additional contrast and clarity for the midtones. You can use recovery uh, by pulling it back to add more highlights. But I find that with the tone curve, I kind of have a little more exact control over it. Like, when I'm adding blacks here, I don't know exactly what range that's adding blacks to. But from the tone curve, depending on where I start, I can affect just the deepest of blacks. Uh, I can affect, you know, slightly kind of more in the shadowy area, the darks. I can affect the highest of highlights. So it kind of gives me a little more control than uh, these basic sliders would up here. So that's what I like using it for. So what I want to do right now is I want to adjust my highlights up. Because I, I notice that the overall contrast is a little bit drab, and that's because we don't have we don't have true highlights and we don't have true shadows right now. So let's bring in some highlights. We're going to start right up here in the highlight area. We're going to click and just pull it up. And what I'm looking at is I'm looking at this highlight side of the stadium to make sure I have some pure whites in there. So I want to keep pulling up a little bit more. Just so it kind of starts giving me, I start seeing that contrast pop back into the image again, and I love that. All right, now I'm going to go down to my deepest shadow side, and I'm going to pull down, let's say, from this region just to give me a little bit darker shadows in this left side. And then what we're going to do is brighten up slightly the mid-tone shadow, and then what I want to do is darken the overall, uh, the overall lights just a tiny bit. Let's see where we want it. Actually, you know what? let's brighten it just a tiny bit. Let's go up to plus six on the lights. And I like that right there. So from here, we're going to go back. And again, I don't want to make too large of adjustments from the tone curve because it can have that unnatural gradation effect. So let's go back to kind of adjusting the image uh, with our basic sliders from here. Now, the next thing I want to do is play with my temperature. I've got this to uh, an exposure that's pretty close to where I want it. So let's start dialing in the correct temperature. And right away, I know I need to warm this up because I see that they're really, really blue right here. Their skin tones are really not natural looking. So let's brighten this up. Or, uh, I'm sorry, let's warm it up until I get it to about, I think about 6600 is good. And you might think that, hey, this kind of stuff over here, especially the sky, looks kind of nasty now because it's all, it's all turning to this uh, kind of yellow effect. We're, we're going to fix that in just a second, so don't worry too much about that. All right, so just get these guys, kind of get the shadow side to the temperature that you want it. I think that's about right. I'm going to boost a little bit of my contrast. Uh, we'll go up to, say, plus, we'll go up to plus 40. And then we're going to boost some clarity to kind of add detail. This is an image with a ton of detail, and so clarity will look really nice as long as we're not going too high. As long as we don't see kind of strange uh, black halos around objects, then we're fine. Next thing I'm going to do is adjust up my vibrance a little bit. And we can even add a little bit. Actually, let's not do saturation. It's going to be too powerful. OK. Now, from here, what I want to do is kind of make some minor adjustments, some fine tuning, basically, to this image. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get my sky to be blue again. And so what I'm going to do is, if you guys remember in the dramatic uh, coloring tutorial, we basically used graduate filters and brushes with colors to enhance the color in the image. We're going to do a similar thing right now with a graduate filter. So I'm going to select my graduate filter. You can also hit M. And then we're going to go down to, we'll just call this, a, it'll just be a color brush. But you guys can save this as whatever you guys want. I'm going to have this darken my sky just a little bit. So I'm going to bring the exposure down just so it kind of is a little bit more deep blue up here. And what I'm going to do for this color is I'm going to have the color be blue. And this is going to bring back the blue into our sky. And then what I want to do is I'm going to adjust the saturation of this brush down. And now what is that saturation going to do? Well, the, 
basically this reducing the saturation of this brush means that it's going to reduce the saturation of the layer underneath the brush while painting blue over it. So what we're going to see is an enhanced blue effect. It's going to pull out a lot of these yellows and it's going to add blue to that. So let's hold shift with our brush and let's pull down from about right here and you'll see how it just adds a nice blue right over the sky. We're going to go down to the edge of the stadium just so it kind of adds a little bit of that blue back into our, our trees and stuff like that in the uh, horizon. I think that's great right there. If you want, you can kind of tweak the exposure a little bit to get it to the point where you want it. Um, I think about 0.51 is good, and I like it right there. All right, now I want to do a little bit of fine tuning to this exposure, but I don't want to use any of the basic sliders, and I don't want to use the tone curve because I want to, let's say, adjust just some of the shadows in this side, not any of the shadows anywhere else, and I want to just adjust some of the highlights on this side. So basically what we're going to have to do is use adjustment brushes, but it's going to be really quick and simple. So let's just select our adjustment brush. You can hit a, uh, K to get there quickly. We're going to select an exposure brush, and all I'm going to do is bring it down, let's say, 0.32. So negative 0.32, make sure your feather flow and density is all at 100, and then we're going to play with the size a little bit just to get it to about right around 20, and then just paint over this highlight stuff. What I want to do is just darken the highlights just a tiny bit, and then bring up the, the shadows just a tiny bit. I'm not going to get it too perfect right now because I'm going to go over a couple passes just to get, uh, just to kind of fine-tune it a little bit. So let's check out where our overlay is right now by hitting O. We can see what we're covering. So now what I'm going to do is hold Alt, and I'm going to paint it out of this sky area. I'm increasing the size so that it has a really nice soft feather along it. So we're just going to kind of paint it out so it's not covering the sky at all. I don't want it to be darkening the sky any more than it is. And then what I'm going to do is decrease the size of my brush and just paint over the stadium because I don't want it to darken the stadium, which is already too dark. I'm going to actually brighten up the shadows and stuff in the stadium. So I'm going to go over this shadowy area, just kind of pull it all out of this this little area over here in the grass. And then it doesn't have to be, I mean, it's it's such a minor adjustment that you don't need to worry about it being like flawless, um, but just get it close. And then we're going to pull it out of them. We don't want to darken them up at all. And then over here on the chairs, I want to pull it out of these chairs. Just out of the out of the highlight, I mean, sorry, out of the shadow side of the chairs, not out of the highlight side. All right, and that's about good right there. All right, guys, so here's our final mask overlay to pull down the highlight side of the stadium. Let's create another adjustment brush. This time we're going to raise the exposure of the shadow side of the stadium just slightly. So I'm going to hit K twice, once to toggle the brush off and then once to toggle it back on. That gives me a new brush. It's at 0.32 exposure right now. That's fine. I'll make an adjustment in a second. I'm going to hold. O, I'm going to hit O to toggle our overlay so we can see as we're painting it in. And now I'm just going to paint over this entire shadowy area. Once again, I don't need to be completely exact with this. I mean, if it were, you know, if you're making large adjustments, like if you're raising uh, exposure by, you know, a full stop, it does need to be a perfect mask because you will, it'll be noticeable basically. So, but this is a very minor adjustment. It's also for this tutorial, so I'm going to go really quick. Now I'm going to hold Alt and we're going to drag over and just kind of fix up and tidy up the edges of the mask. That looks great right there. Uh, let's keep pulling it down. And once again, you want to be careful to just make sure that your feather is always at 100 on this because you don't want any edges appearing whatsoever. All right. That looks great out there. Let's hit O just to make sure. Let's look at it. Make sure we don't have any noticeable lines anywhere. Um, there's a little bit right here, but I'm not going to worry about tidying it up. Normally, I would kind of drag in and, and tidy up a little bit by just shrinking my brush down. I'm not going to worry about it. We're going to decrease the amount by a little bit to 0.25, make it just slightly more subtle. And that's great right there, guys. I'm going to close my adjustment brush, and now let's just make a few minor adjustments. I'm going to raise contrast just a bit. Let's go up to plus 50. Um, I think that's great. I like the colors a lot. Let's just tweak our sharpening, and we're done. So I'm going to zoom in. We're going to take up sharpening pretty high, actually, because uh, I'm going to do a lot of noise reduction as well, and that's going to kill out our sharpening. So let's go up pretty high, plus 71, 1.7, and 50. Uh, and then let's take noise reduction up pretty high as well. So we're going to go plus 60 on noise reduction. You'll notice here, check this out, this is why I tell you guys to shoot at low, low ISO because we've added a lot of noise in these shadows. Um, and the more you have to bring out the shadows, the more noise you're going to be adding. So let's go up to plus, we'll go up to plus 70. That looks about right. And I want to kill all of my uh, color noise too, so make sure your color noise reduction is also up pretty high. Um, about plus 75 is around good. I think that's great. I might reduce the sharpening just a tiny bit because I don't want it to be that 
I don't want to have harsh edges anywhere. And that's great. I'm going to zoom out. We're going to bring in a slight lens vignette. I'm using my lens vignette as opposed to post crop because I want this to be very, very subtle. Um, and I like kind of the, the look of the lens vignetting over post crop. Post crop has been improved, had major improvements in Lightroom 3, but I still like using lens vignetting just for a very subtle effect. And I'm bringing the midpoint all the way to zero and the amount to negative 0.33. I just want it to kind of darken slightly on the edges and then kind of be a little bit more bright in the middle. And guys, I think we're done. Let's save this as our tone map snapshot. So I'm going to go to my snapshots. We're going to call this tone mapped. I'm going to show you guys one last little trick. I love black and white tone mapped images. The enhanced detail makes them look amazing. So let's close up this left bar. Let's bring up our film strip and let's create a virtual copy by hitting control and an apostrophe. You can also right click and select virtual copy as well. We're going to convert this virtual copy. Let me get rid of my film strip. We're going to convert this virtual copy to a black and white. We need to do one thing here. Our, our adjustment brush had that color in it, remember? So we're going to select that adjustment brush. I still want it to darken the sky, but I'm going to actually make it darken even more. But what I want to do is remove that color because I don't want any blue in my sky. So remove the color, and then I'm going to have it darken the sky a little bit more. Just make it super dramatic. And then we're going to increase our brightness, um, add a little bit more blacks to it. Just kind of punch up the image quite a bit. Um, and that looks great right there. And I'm also going to increase the amount of vignetting. And now we have an awesome black and white version of that tone map image as well. So let's uh, save this as black and white tone mapped. All right, guys, so let's see exactly what we did. We spring up our film strip. Here is our first image. Here was the original CR2 low dynamic range with our shadows that are very dark, highlights that are very bright. Here is that tone map version of that image. It looks very HDR-like, but it still looks much more natural than like the, the over-processed HDRs that you see online. Here is our tone mapped black and white, and here is the original tone mapped image that we just finished. So you can see how nice that, those look is in black and white as well. Great job, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial.